Did you catch that guy, uh, Tom? He was over in there. There's that. There's that big group page on on Facebook. It's called uh, that Jackson's page. What's it called? Uh, the DL. The DL After Dark. DL After Dark. I believe that's what it's. Jack, is that what it's called? DL After Dark. It is called the DL After Dark. Yeah. Uh, well, his microphone wasn't on, of course. Uh, but DL After Dark. So there's this guy that went into uh, to Disneyland, got stopped at security. And in the metal detector, they found a weed pen in his pocket, one of those weed vape pens. Yep, CBD. But it was just CBD. And ap- apparently, Steph, you guys would be the expert on this. You can't get, like, really high off CBD. No, it doesn't contain THC. It's just more or less for aches and pains. and. So it just kind of numbs your body, but it doesn't get you high? Or how does I, it work? I smoke to get high, so I... <laughs> 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 C- CBD, that's for the new kids, you know, I... So, anyways, this guy had a CBD <laughs> pin in his pocket and got picked up at the metal detector, and they said, oh, you can't bring that in. And he said, oh, this is CBD for my post-traumatic stress disorder, whatever. And uh, they said, you got to take it back to your car. So he took it back to his car, and then when he came back down, they caught him before he made it to security, and they said, hey, are you the guy that just had the CBD pin in your pocket? And he's like, yes. And they asked him, well, have you smoked it today? And he's like, yes, I smoke it every day. You know, it helps me. You know, I have post-traumatic stress disorder. I was involved in the Las Vegas shooting. And uh, they said, well, if you've smoked that today, uh, are you a pass holder? And he told him, yeah. And they took his pass and suspended it for a year. Never took it in the park. What? Yep. Took it so, away. So, and he was fully honest, did what they told him to do, brought it back to his car. But because he admitted to using it, they took his pass mm-hmm. away mm-hmm. Prior, to for a year. prior to even entering the park. Mm-hmm. Yep. So apparently, Disney's policy is you can't have marijuana in the parks, but... What I don't get is he never made it in the parks with it, so zero but tolerance. It was yeah, park property. Well, I don't know. That's crazy. A, don't you know, know who technically owns the property where the parking structure is at before you get on the tram? I thought that was City of Anaheim. No comment. No comment. That's not Disney Th- property. This, that's this, that's City of Anaheim. This is my thing. Say say, you decide to have a couple tokes of your pen while uh-huh. you're at home uh-huh. getting dressed in the morning. Uh-huh. You know, getting ready yeah. to go to Disneyland. Mm-hmm. You get there. They take your pen, they ask you about it, maybe he smoked at home. Not on the way there or in the parking lot or some shit like that. Mm-hmm. They still took his pass. Well, they asked, this, him if he, like, they asked him if he smoked it that day. Yeah. The, so Such what if it was that morning, question. like first thing in the morning, like, you know, seven hours before he got here, and yet they still took his pass. They took his pass. Never made it into the... Now, I could almost understand, Tom, if, if they told him... You know, they caught him once before and said, hey, you can't bring it out of the park. And then they catch him in the smoking section inside smoking on it. And they say, hey, we, you know, we already have you on record or, you know, whatever. Okay. Am I That's the one only thing. One? No, no. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I, no, no, no. Come on, man. Am I the only one who thinks there's, just, there's a portion of the story missing? I, I, I think there might be, but, but you know. Yeah, I, you I got don't high think, 10 I don't, hours ago. So we're going to take your pass right now. I don't know, man. I don't think. Uh, I mean, we we don't have a comment from Disneyland on, was he on their side a, of the story. Was he being a dick? He said he wasn't. Well, everybody said. Well, I don't know. At the, at the, I mean, I guess if everything is at their discretion, anything is possible. It is possible that it happened. Yes. However, you you know you don't get to be this age and be a complete fool. At least I, I hope you don't. Well, I'll tell you what. I wasn't planning on getting to that right now. So, so anyways, we're going to talk about that. We've got an interview with him. I mean, I, honestly, to me, what I think is going on is because with the new legalization of recreational marijuana in the state of California, and then you have people using it for medical use, I think it's something, I think it's a new issue that Disney, on the corporate level, hasn't tackled yet and, and seen how they're going to handle it. Uh, and, it's, and it is being handled by the boots on the ground, and I think that's, uh, they're going to have to do something, maybe. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm going to assume that it's going to continue to be a zero t- tolerance because federally it is still illegal. Right, And right. because not only do they have Disneyland, they also have other properties across the nation that are owned by the same conglomerate. And uh, for them, they have – it's too much to lose. <clears throat> and, 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 I mean, and it was never – no matter – remember, the laws changed in California, not Disneyland's – protocols right on how to deal with this shit. and they're a private know, was, company they don't have to you know they can they can go above the, the <clears throat> california state law and enforce whatever they want in their parks but the, the thing that i'm getting at is it never made it in the park true it never made it in the park i mean he was just caught in the parking structure with it in hey, his pocket i'm not much. an advocate i'm not saying they did the right thing you know, I think it was pretty shitty to tell you the truth because regardless of where he did it, he wasn't there when he. You know, they 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 caught him with said pen that they said you can't have. Take it back to your car. He did what he asked, what they asked him to do. You know, they should have just like I didn't see the problem. 
Right. You know, I didn't see the problem. Or right. Why they why they took us past? Like that's pretty far, fucking fetched. Reach out to say, okay, well, because you medicated yourself anytime prior to coming here with no specific date or time period. You know what I mean? He didn't say whether it happened at two in the morning or. And he you know, was, and the two sad part ago. about it is he was honest. He told them, yeah, I did and use it today, it. Yeah. and they still took his pass. Uh, I just want to say, if you take your dog to Disneyland, they're able to verify the shots the, of the dog, the records, that those are up to date. It shouldn't be that difficult for someone at Disney to be able to verify that my recommendation is valid. And I could understand them doing something like with alcohol, where, no, you can't bring in outside alcohol. Okay, you can't bring in outside cannabis products. Maybe Disney might have a corner market where they just have Mickey Mouse you know, cartridges or something that they allow you to go to the back lot with. Whatever it is, but I would really hope that Disney would take a second look at this policy because there's a lot of people that are going to be negatively uh, and adversely uh, impacted by it. What's the balance, the, though, the between un- the people who are going to start bitching at Disney and now decide that they're no longer going to buy Disney products and, and buy shit for their grandchildren and stuff like that because now they say, oh, well, they're just going to let them smoke pot in the parks? Well, I don't want no. anything to do with Disney. No, but I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's not about smoking pot in the parks. Like What I'm talking about is only allowing medical patients to use vaporizing cartridges where, just like at Sonoma, you go in there, you show your ID, You go into a place, you show your recommendation, they give you, you know, you buy your uh, uh, cartridges from them, and then they say, at this area, (laughs) the back lot. So you're saying that that we're going to walk down Main Street, we're going to walk down Main Street, and there's going to be a white flag outside of one of the buildings (laughs) with a green cross on it, and that's if you're a medical patient, that's where you go buy your Walt McWeed. I I mean, it's 2018, if chicks are fucking dogs, It's 2018, right? It's it's 2018. I I, 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 what's supposed to happen in 2020 then? I don't. I don't. This is what's going on in 2018. So basically, I, everything that we do, we just have to follow with it's 2018. Well, I, 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 this is the thing that I think is the main concern of everybody that's listening to this show and the people that listen to this podcast is people need to be aware that right now, if you show up at security's door with a weed pin in your pocket, which a lot of people do, good chance you're going to lose your pass. Good chance you're going to lose your pass for a year. I'm not saying whether it's right, whether it's wrong. I'm just saying, heads up, people. You show up at the gate with a weed pin in your pocket, you could get your pass yanked for a year. And the problem with, with your argument, Brandon, is I'm not and, and I'm not arguing it one way or the other, but the problem is if there's such a restriction on alcohol going into the park from outside, mm-hmm. how do they tell people that drink and don't do that, that it's okay, that you can't do it, but if you, if you have a pen with CBD... Then you can. I got two answers for that. Uh, first of all, it, for medicine, medicinal purposes oh, I, specifically yeah, different, and, and that's one thing. The second thing is, like I said, you require them to get the vape pens inside the park, and and oh, that's have, never going to happen. Never going to happen. Whole, you guys say never. You know how man. much it would cost if Disney starts selling weed? You know how much how much a gram of weed is going to cost? Would you Disney? not spend it? I wouldn't because I don't really smoke weed. But, no, but would I'm it be saying, only the best like, shit? That's all I want to know. If it was the it best be shit, magical. I'd buy it. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. If they I'd had medical it. pans, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. And, and if you knew that you could get your medication there and all you had to do was pay and you get a little oh, Mickey Mouse on. vape cartridge, I, I think it's so this, is a, this is a fucking pipe dream. It would Wait, have to Disney... be some, like, turn into Fantasia type shit. Like, the whole park would have to just turn to liquid <laughs> for so people to be buying it there. They have shit like that, too. It's <laughs> called heroin and LSD. No, no way Disneyland's yeah. <laughs> going to start selling weed. No man. way. And I don't think they're it's ever gonna, gonna and I don't think they're ever gonna lift their restrictions on no on even on the rec or even medical for yeah the, the problem the, the, the problem the problem with this specific issue is I agree with that I don't think Disneyland is ever gonna allow weed in the parks nope. he, the he, problem is this guy getting his pass suspended and he never brought it into the parks that's the issue you well, real quick I do agree with you at the current moment that's the issue but you think that even if the federal law changes that um, Check the donations. Yes, uh, I saw at least the one. I will check it again as soon as I okay. Okay. drop the mic. Sorry. No worries. Don't drop that mic. That mic's very expensive. No worries. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, yeah, so I don't think weed's ever going to be uh, uh, legal inside the parks. But uh, like I said, I'm, we're just warning everybody out there, everybody in the social club scene, everybody in the DL after dark, everybody out there that likes to have a good time at the parks and smoke their little pins over there in, 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 in the smoking section, Right now, you better watch it because you could end up without a pass for a year, and you're going to bitch and you're going to complain about it, and uh, because it's you suck. still have to pay for it. Now, is that yeah, another? Is that, is that a situation where he could write a letter, like in uh, 
Possibly. And what's his name? That- I saw the letter that they gave him, and the letter that they sent him and was, Adrian's your case. pass is revoked for a year. If you have any questions, they gave him a number to call. So it, it, he, it doesn't even sound like he has the same issue as Adrian, where he can write a letter. No. And have that revo- have It doesn't appear that way. Re- re- it doesn't appear that way. Wow. So that's what's going on with that. Yeah, so it's a, it's a, it's a crappy situation, and I guess we'll get to that interview. Okay. Hey, I'm Jake with Radio Underline. I'm here with Garrett. And uh, Garrett, you are an annual pass holder with Disneyland, right? Yes, just renewed for fifth or sixth year straight. Okay, and how long have you been a pass holder? A oh, fifth, five or six years. You just yeah. answered that question. Yeah, this interview is already going fucking excellent. <laughs> All right. So you have a very interesting story. And your story, I'm just going to put it right here up the top in a nutshell. Basically, you got caught at security with a CBD oil pen. pen. Yeah. And you were asked to take it back to your car, which you did. Mm-hmm. And when you came back through security again, after taking the pin back to your car, uh, they stopped you and asked you if you had used that pin that day. Is that correct? Correct, yes. And when they asked you that, you told them that you had, and they pretty much took your pass and uh, removed it for a year. Is that correct? Correct, yes. Okay. That in itself is a crazy story. Yes. So you've been a pass holder for five to six years, and are you medically prescribed your CBD pin? Um, I used to have a card, but then once everything started becoming legal, it kind of became like trying to get a prescription for Tylenol, you know, where it wasn't necessary. Um, So yeah, I mean, I just kind of went on my own and got it because it's legal. The security guard even told me it's a legal product and understood that it was. But yeah, I mean, as of right now, no, I don't have like a, an active Actually, prescription prescription for it. Yeah. Okay, and why do you use the CBD pin? Because correct me if I'm wrong. With CBD, it, it's not necessarily getting you high, correct. is it? No, there's nothing. The the plant has two different type of like chemicals into it, and there's a THC which gets you high, and then there's a CBD that gives you the medical benefits of it without getting high. Um, I tried when I hurt my back a long time ago. I tried actual just weed, and then. I don't like the high feeling of it, so I was trying to find something different. And then I found out about the actual just THC weed pens, and same problem, it was just, it was still getting me high and I didn't like the high feeling. Um, and so then, yeah, I just switched over to the CBD ones once I found that out, and it's been working great. I can wake up and use it, have zero high, lagged out feelings, nothing, yeah. everything's good. And, and you're using that only for your back problems, or is there any other issues that you take CBD oil for? No, that's kind of what started it. Um, the reason I take it now, and especially why I needed it at Disneyland, was because of being in Vegas when that shooting happened. Um, we weren't actually at the concert. We were at the Hooters Casino where everyone went running into, you know, like screaming, covered in blood. And, you know, we went running outside, which we shouldn't have, but we did. And just, you know, it was mayhem there. Like the stuff that, you know, I was seeing isn't stuff that I'll ever forget and can't get out of my head. Um, but there's just times when I get, you know, I already had anxiety before, but that just made it so much worse. Now anywhere I go, you know, I'm looking for like an exit, like if someone came that way, you know, could I go that way? You know, how it could all work out. But when I take the CBD pen, I don't really think of those things. I kind of just, you know, I mellow out, I'm calm, I'm relaxed, you know, I'm not overthinking everything and just, you know, it helps me out a lot. And so, yeah. place, so somewhere like Disneyland that's crowded and there's people yelling and screaming and running everywhere, you know, it kind of brings back some stuff. But like I said, it, it doesn't get me high or anything like that. You know, children use it, you know, for seizures and stuff like that. And so that was, yeah. So when you go somewhere uh, since the Vegas incident, which was a hor- horrific incident, and, and, and I know a lot of people that kind of have a, uh, a post-traumatic stress disorder from that same situation that you're involved with. Um, so without the CBD oil, when you go to a place with crowds, is it just, you just get a, like a massive anxiety almost? Yeah, I'll, uh, you know, like I said, like overthinking stuff and freaking out. Um, my hands get real sweaty. I start getting sweaty, but cold and just freaking out. And, you know, I get where I start like, tapping my feet, like biting my nails, just kind of freaking out. Um, it's just, it takes a very small thing, you know, to kind of trigger back to it. And so somewhere, you know, like Disneyland, when someone's screaming and running, you know, all of a sudden I'm back to alert. Like, do I got to run too? You know, what's going on? Right. So, so that day you went to Disneyland with your family, right? You're a family man. I, I is that what I heard? Yes. Okay. And so you went to Disneyland and you went to security, 
and they they basically saw your CBD pin in your in your pocket and the how, in the metal detectors. And how did the conversation go with security once they found that pin? Um, <laughs> as soon as they went to the metal detector, I thought of it and I was like, oh, I think I forgot my pin in my pocket. Um, Cause I wasn't gonna bring it in, you know. I've been hearing of people kind of getting in trouble for stuff and wasn't going to. Um, and that's actually all the guy saw was just the cartridge, not the battery part. Also, just the cartridge, and had asked me, you know, what it was, and I told him it was just my CBD cartridge, like it's just for my pen. And he's like, "Well, you can't have that." And I'm like, "Dude, like I need this." Ever, you know, and I tried to explain to him like the Vegas situation and you know stuff like that. Like I'll freak out if I don't have it. And because um, at that point, I didn't want to walk back to the car. So I was like, whatever, if I have it, I'll just take it in with me. Um, but then that's when he went to talk to another guy just real briefly. And then he came right back and told me, you know, throw it away or take it back to the car. And I told him, I was like, you obviously don't know anything about CBD. This is very expensive stuff. I'm not throwing it away. And he was like, okay, well, then you got to take it back to your vehicle. And I said, all right, fine. That's, you know, that's what I'll do. And then, yeah, I took it back. And then I guess it still wasn't good enough. So do you think that you're, you're, I won't call it a confrontation, I'll call it a discussion with security. Yeah. Uh, was it kind of, um, was anybody yelling or anything like that or was it pretty civil just having a conversation and a discussion almost, not really an argument, but a discussion of, well, hey, I need this because of this. I mean, did it get to any point where you were being unruly or, or, or causing a scene or anything like that? No, I mean, it was barely even a conversation. I mean, once he asked me if I had used it, I told him, yes, of course. You know, it's one of the first things I do in the morning is I use it, you know, it's my medicine, basically. And um, that's when he asked me, and that's where I got myself in trouble, apparently, was being honest. Yeah. Because, one, I told him the truth that I used it. Then he asked if I had a pass, and I said yes. And then he asked to see it, so I gave it to him. And then that's when, you know, he just basically put in his little notebook. And then that's when I asked him, I was like, well, you're the, you know, can I tell you why I have it? Went through the whole thing again, and he's... He just told me, he was like, regardless of um, your reason for using it, he said, I know it's a legal product outside of the park, but inside the park, it is a legal, an illegal, an illegal substance yes. that they don't allow. Yeah. Okay. So, so basically, they instructed you that you had to take it back to your car, which you did. Yeah. And, and I've been on that same long walk. I've shown up to Disneyland before, <laughs> and I accidentally had a knife in my pocket, and I didn't want to get rid of it. And I've had to make that long walk all the way back to the parking structure, and it's a pain in the ass, but you did it. Yeah. And so after that, you put your CBD pin in your car, your truck, whatever, and you walk all the way back. And then what happened when you approached security for the second time on the return? Um, well, I came walking up. And I already knew I wasn't gonna go back to those guys again, just cause I didn't want the issue. I don't, the yeah, issue. exactly. Um, I figured if I can just get a clean start with someone else, it's not gonna go off cause I don't have it now. But before I even got a chance to get there, they had like three or four guys and then the, I'm assuming the supervisor there and just came right up to me. You know, they had like the two guys that recognized me and pointed it out and then that's when they all came up to me and had that. And then what did they say? Well, that's when he asked me if I was the guy that had the CBD pen and so I said, yes, you know, being honest. And I thought maybe, you know, he would realize like, oh, I know what CBD is. Like, you know, it's fine. And then that's when he asked me if I'd used it. And then, you know, for my past and all that. Now, I, I, I have actually contacted Disneyland before about their policy regarding whether it be alcohol or anybody under the influence. And uh, what I've heard directly from Disneyland is basically if somebody is under the influence and it's visible by security uh it's at their discretion and they can take actions against it mm -hmm. now was would there be any reason for them to believe that you were actually under the influence i mean you you say the cbd doesn't get you high were you acting in any way that would give them suspicion to believe that you were under the influence absolutely not i mean the same as i'm standing right here you know uh and that's the whole thing too you know with the CBD but it kept me calm because inside I was very angry about the situation and the lack of like knowledge it seemed that they had about it but you know I still just you know bit my lip kept my mouth shut did everything they asked you know I was honest about everything and at the end of it I you know I got a little mad at the end I'm like well what am I supposed to do now and he's like you can't go in and I was like that's it and, and how long did you drive how long was your drive to the park that day Oh, that day, well, there was a lot of traffic, so it took us at least an hour and a half to get there. So you drove an hour and a half to the parks. You get stopped for having a substance on you that is legal mm -hmm. in the state of California, but Disneyland doesn't want it in their parks. You took it back to your car underneath their 
at advising mm -hmm. that they wouldn't allow that in the parks. You took it back in the park, just like they said, like they asked you to do. Yeah. You come back and for having a legal substance, they took your pass, didn't they? Yes, correct. How does that make you feel? It makes me feel upset. Um, and honestly, kind of like sad. You know, there's a lot of people out there that need CBD to be in a place like Disneyland. Um, people that are trying to use that instead of narcotics, you know, because a lot of people, that's what they do is they use CBD instead of, you know, like Norcos and stuff like that. Um, and so when I had posted it online before, that was what a lot of people were saying. It was like, well, I have, you know, epilepsy or I have this and I have that. You're saying that I can't take it in. And I'm like, apparently not. You know, if you, if you need CBD, you can't go to Disneyland apparently. Did you have any warning prior to that day or any knowledge that uh, Disneyland wouldn't let you bring in CBD oil? No, absolutely not. I mean, and that was what kind of tripped me out on it because there's many times I've been in the smoking areas and people are sitting there smoking joints, you know, and smoking their, you know, vape pens and stuff like that too. And it's just kind of, I don't know, I guess I just got extremely unlucky. Um, but yeah, I mean... That's where it's at right now. Have you looked at Disney's policies online? Because I don't think they state anything specifically about CBD. Um, is ha have you have you noticed anything online that it refers specifically to CBD oil? Now, in hindsight, since since they obviously got you in trouble for that, yeah. have you looked into it? Have you saw anything online where they state anything about specifically CBD oil in their online policy? Not that I saw. Um, everything I saw is said no uh, marijuana, and that was basically it. Which, I mean, to me, that's why I didn't really think about it was because I didn't see what was wrong with bringing CBD because, you know, one, I didn't see anything in the rules of saying directly no CBD. Um, and I didn't think I needed to look at it. You know, I didn't see what was wrong with bringing it. Like I say, you know, it was to me, it's the same as if I brought in a bottle of Tylenol into Disneyland. Right. It's just, I guess, it's the lack of knowledge and education and the current updates that are constantly making on CBD that, I don't know, I just kind of hope that a place like Disneyland would do their research on it, you know. Right. And, um, you know, part of me wants to say that I think that this is something that's probably a new issue that uh, that Disneyland's dealing with. Um, part of me wants to say that, I, you know, I know the security, they handle a lot of stuff at their own, own discretion. And uh, maybe Disneyland doesn't have an official policy regarding CBD directly, and it's kind of uh, just some of these security guys going rogue on their own. Uh, but at the same time, for you, that's a horrible situation to get a pass, which you pay a lot of money for, oh, yeah. totally revoked for you uh, allegedly breaking a rule that you didn't know existed for and isn't accident. clarified even on their website. Mm -hmm. um, that's very, very unfortunate. Now, has Disneyland in any way contacted you since the, that day and uh, at the day that they took your pass? Have they contacted you in any way? Um, not really. I just got kind of a generic letter saying the date that it was revoked and that it would be revoked for an entire year and then just gave me a phone number and a, a time frame to be calling and that someone will eventually call me back with some kind of response, apparently. Now, you being, being a family of pass holders, if you can't use your pass, can the rest of your family do that? Are they even going to go to Disneyland without you? They did. They did? <laughs> but, I mean, <laughs> they went because I had to work, so I couldn't have gone anyway. Yeah. Um, but it was kind of a bummer, you know, seeing, you know, my girl sending me Snapchats of my daughter on rides, you know, having a good time and just kind of being like, damn, like, now I can't go, you know, to enjoy those same kind of moments. Um, but, yeah, they were still able to get in and everything. They went, but I guess, I don't know. We got to, I got to call that number, I guess, but... And we'll find out. And uh, if you call that number, and, and I and I saw, you showed me the letter earlier that Disneyland sent you, and it and it it straight up says that your pass is revoked for one year. Mm -hmm. And if you have any questions, call this number, uh, customer service. Now, uh, I'm assuming you're going to call that number, and they're just going to state some of the same thing. Oh, we don't allow any marijuana products in the park, and yeah, that's why your pass is revoked. If you call that number and they don't, you don't get any resolution or your pass back or anything like that uh do you plan on actually seeking legal help in this matter um the only legal thing i would look for is just to if i'm banned i should i feel i shouldn't be still making payments on it on my pass um, i understand that you know it's their rule and apparently i broke it and you know they're allowed to do whatever they want but i just you know to me it blows my mind that i just renewed about like two weeks before this happened 
and they send me at the same exact time the thank you for renewing for a year and then the letter that I'm revoked for a year. Um, to me, it's just if I, if I am banned or revoked, whatever, for a year, I don't feel I should still be paying for a year on something that I did on accident. Right. You know, if I was getting and, drunk and making a big scene or, you know, something that was totally my fault, you know, I was out of line, then I could see it, but this was an accident. But at the same time, their rule is that they don't allow marijuana products inside the parks. Right. You never took marijuana products inside the parks. Right. Uh, it never made it inside. So I'm not understanding from their point of view or the point of view of security of how you violated their policy if you were, you know, stopped with the, 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 the product that they considered to be not allowed in their parks, but it never made it into their parks, and you took it back just like they said. I mean, that's the same, it would be the same as the day that I got caught with a pocket knife in my, in my pocket. Mm -hmm. They don't allow that in the parks. Now I took it back to my car. If they would have revoked my pass for that, you know, because everybody goes through security and, and makes little mistakes, you know, oh, I forgot my knife. Trouble, I forgot my knife. I, a buddy of mine the other day got stopped with a harmonica yeah. because they don't allow musical instruments in the park. Really? Um, so it's it's one of those things where do you feel like security or whoever was making the call that day went way too far? Um, yes. You know, I think he should have. If it's something you don't know about, then try to find someone higher up than you or whatever that does know what is going on. Um, but yeah, yeah, I would say that it should have been handled differently on their part for sure. Uh, but if he's going to say that I was under the influence of it, but yet he wasn't saying that I looked like I was under the influence of anything, you know, he wasn't, he didn't even know. The only reason he knew is because I told him, yes, I used it. Have you taken your CBD oil today? Oh yeah. And you don't appear to be in, intoxicated or in any manner in, uh, impaired yeah. uh, in, in your conversation with me right now. Well, that's very interesting. I hope that things work out for you. It's a very unfortunate story. I know there's a lot of people out there that are pass holders that, you know, uh, have medical marijuana cards or they just smoke marijuana recreationally. So what would be your advice to anybody out there that happens to be an annual pass holder that uses either CBD oil or uh, uh, any type of a marijuana product? I would say don't bring it. For sure, don't bring it. It's at least not until they educate themselves a little more and how to tell the difference between CBD and THC. I, I, to me, it's not worth it, especially if you have to drive from far away. You know, it's really not going to be worth it. But yeah, that'd be my advice: is uh, at the least wait until they start educating themselves a little more and figure out how they can tell the difference between the two. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for driving out to meet me, <laughs> and I wish you the best. Have a great day. So I don't know. Uh, I, one thing I did notice that he said in there, he said in there that he is not a, a medical card holder anymore, but I don't know how much of a difference that makes because, you know, you don't need a prescription for what he has, so why would you still have the medical card? I mean, I could see it if Disneyland moved to some policy where they only allowed people with medical cards in or something like that with their medical marijuana. But what I don't understand is he said during the interview that it, they gave him an option to go back to his car or throw it away. So if he had thrown it away, would they have not? Would they have? Would they have let him in? I don't know. Brandon, any thoughts after hearing that? Yeah, I mean, technically under the law, you don't have to have a written recommendation. You just have to have a qualifying condition. The recommendation does absolutely help in uh, verifying your patient's status. Um, I have always, uh, for the last 10 or 12 years or whatever, uh, been an advocate for medical marijuana specifically because there are a lot of substantial conditions that are greatly benefited with medical marijuana. You can dramatically reduce the amount of opiate medications and other medications that you can take by using cannabis. So I personally think that there should be a clear delineated distinction between the recreational use and the medical use. Also, uh, when you're talking about the alleged uh, conflict between state and federal law, there is much less of a conflict because Congress has recognized um, to a certain degree the medical aspect by defunding raids in medical states and whatnot. Um, uh, so I think that there is absolutely a clear difference in allowing a medical patient to use their medication <laughs> as opposed to <laughs> someone that's just stoned can off just, their can ass. Can I just point out that when when he's talking to us, he has to concentrate so intently that he's closing his fucking eyes. 
<laughs> Who exactly are you talking to? <laughs> he sounds like it's he was reading from a teleprompter. <laughs> I'm like, what is he talking about? With his fucking <laughs> eyes closed. He's got his eyes closed. Like, is there a is there a teleprompter in your head going on right now? Oh man, he's got that red f- fucking nailed, man. This kid no, is I mean, made because, for politics. You know, I've been doing this for a long yeah. time, but last time I was staring at the ceiling, so I'm trying to figure out different ways. Like of full on <laughs> eyes closed, Maybe giving a just shoot. so hot. You lost Absolutely. me probably Guys. after the, like the fifth word. Guys, maybe he's just so high he can't keep his eyes open. There, there, a, there may too. be some relevance to that. <laughs> okay. No, absolutely. I just felt like Charlie no. Brown in class right now. Lawrence said you're using all these big words. Yeah. You might yeah. choke yeah. on one. Lawrence would know by joking, huh? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I don't know. Dick's a pretty small word. <clears throat> oh, shit. But I'll tell you what, Tom. Uh, you know, <laughs> hanging out with a guy and talking to him on uh, in person and, 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 and hearing his story, looking at him in the eyes when he told me the story, I... I'm a pretty good judge at reading people. I didn't think he was full of shit. In, I mean, because I hear this story, and I want to believe that there's got to be more to it, and he's got to be hiding something. There had to be more of an issue uh, for them to revoke his past. But hearing him tell the story straight to my face, I believe what he told me. He In, li- in watching the interview and listening to the interview, even though we were kind of watching it out of sync, which made it kind of more funny, he seems like a believable guy. Like, it sounds like he's telling... Like he looks like a, a believable person. Mm-hmm. I didn't. I didn't get any. I. I don't know. It just doesn't. It seems like something's missing. Mm. It's almost like there has to be something missing, but maybe there just isn't. I just can't wrap my head around the fact that they were going to let him throw it away. I almost wish he said, "Okay, I'll just throw it away." Well, and, and even then, if they asked him, "Have you consumed your medication today?" He could have always either said no, or that's between me and my doctor. And I asked him about. I asked him about that after I did this interview. He said he didn't want to lie. Well, I mean, I understand not wanting to lie, but it's kind of like you know, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you. I'm I'm keeping my my mouth shut, you know, and, and I'm saying that's none of your business. Uh, I'm just here to have a good time. I've already complied with your orders. Like, just let me let me go in there and have some fun. Mm. So we've got and, and I've got somebody from Disney Security that's commenting. I'm not going to give any names, but uh, they're saying that they would have not told him to throw it away. They would have told him to either take it back to his car, take it to his hotel, or surrender it to the officer. And if he surrendered it, of course, he wouldn't get it back. Uh, so I think maybe he was just considering it, giving it to them would be the same as throwing it away because they obviously told him yeah, he wouldn't get it Yeah, they'd throw it away for you. So yeah. maybe because he didn't. I, but but he, it says in there that they would have told him to take it to a car. They, so, did. Yeah, they, they did. did. They, they did. did. They did. And he but did. They and did. he did. And that's exactly what he did. But then they took his pass. Yeah. Afterwards. Shitty move. Yeah, that's kind of crappy. 